promoting 1.0. To me too. Um, thank you. A uh, special thanks to Mr. Stockmeister, who is serving as the board's point person on Framework 3.0. We appreciate the time and attention he has been giving to the project, and we look forward to his participation in our Feb February planning work sessions next week. Uh, I also want to give a special thanks to my colleagues, Amy Burgess and Rebecca Gailey, who are here today. They are my partners in crime in um, Framework 3.0 planning and appreciate all their help. I'm going to go rather quickly. Uh, a number of these slides you've seen before, and we were just hoping to refresh um, on uh, the teaming that we've put together and the number of folks who have been engaged in framework planning, the fact that we are currently in the scenarios development um, uh, phase of the project. We have completed our first round of workshops and our second round of February workshops are next week. Um, we have had significant um, engagement uh, since the beginning of this project and, and, and the start of this academic school year um, with faculty, staff, students, and lots of stakeholders. And uh, we've also collected um, a considerable amount of data that will help underpin the development of our scenarios in these months ahead. One of the data points we mentioned last time was our Wi-Fi data. Uh, we have collected anonymous Wi-Fi data a week of it um, during, I think it was uh, September, early October perhaps, uh, all devices accessing Wi-Fi hotspots. And uh, it was 28 million data points were collected and we analyzed them through our GIS systems to identify where people were in mass, right? So, um, at, and different times of the day. So we can go through and understand where are where is significant hotspots of activities. We'll use this data to understand um, utilization of our facilities, uh, layering it on with condition data of buildings. You can imagine we can start to understand um, when a building has a tremendous um, benefit to us and during different times of the day. So we can kind of uh, map out kind of how the how the campus breathes as the day moves forward. We can also understand uh, where amenities need to be based on the population of campus at certain times of the day. In addition, uh, we have taken a very deep dive look into our space. Um, you can see those uh, space types identified in red. Uh, we have a gap. Um, we do not have enough of those space types based on our analysis. While the spaces in uh, bold black, for example, academic offices and administrative offices, we have a surplus. And so part of this work will be to um, bring those spaces into balance. And can we repurpose some of the spaces we have a surplus of to meet some of the uh, outstanding needs and other space typologies? You've seen this before. It's our planning principles. Uh, we have uh, four major uh, principles, all of which need to meet the goals of sustainability and wellness. We've divided those into subcategories, um, and those are helping us um, act as kind of a, our compass and a, our North Star as we develop scenarios going, going forward. So where are we going? Previously in framework plans, we have traditionally taken kind of a North-South approach and that's typically because of we have a river um, that goes north south that cuts our, our um, campus um, through the middle. And we also have a pretty significant uh, state route and railroad. And so just naturally you start to think of these uh, areas of campus in a north to south um, way. However, we feel it's really important with framework 3.0 that we turn that. Uh, we need to really focus and work on the connectivity between these areas of campus. And so we're looking more east to west this time. And so you'll see that as we bring forward scenarios for your consideration, you'll see that we have taken a much stronger look uh, east to west. We've also dug deeper in each of those um, categories to identify actions that we want to take and achieve um, through these strategies uh, as we build scenarios. This next series of slides is just to give you an understanding of the way that we look at this data and start to understand campus and build these scenarios out. I can tell you that um, these slides have, have been changing um, as we're, our thinking is evolving. And uh, so this is just illustrative. But we think about those connections, the historic 
um, planning that we've done on campus. We think about east-west connections that we'd like to see developed over time. Uh, we layer on activity areas and opportunities for increased density and development. And Woody Hayes and Kinnear Road are both significant opportunities for us to bridge those uh, areas of campus. We layer on key connections and interdisciplinary hubs, both existing and desired. And, and you can imagine we're using that information from the Wi-Fi data and other uh, uh, data points to understand that um, better. And we start to look at uh, gateways, and, and now we're going through a process of examining each of those gateways because not every gateway is the same, but we have, you know, Keith Myers used to say, we, we're like a sponge, we, you know, absorb and leak in every direction, and so how do we start to identify those gateways, um, communicate that you're on campus appropriately, um, not, they're not all the same, but they all need to um, be thoughtful in how we um, enter and exit campus and how we uh, help people understand where they are and wayfinding. On this slide, you can, one of, one of the conversations we've had in the past around um, framework plan is the number of other initiatives um, that are going on that we're folding in. And you can see in January and, and also this month in February, we are folding in a lot of the work that the med medical center has been doing uh, with their facilities optimization uh, planning work and also that student life has been doing with their facilities plan that their facilities plan and student life is really focused on on campus planning and we we have engaged uh, consultants to help um, housing as it relates to off campus so that would be upperclassmen uh, graduate students, faculty, staff needs. And so together, we think we have a very comprehensive look at some of our housing, the demand around housing. Uh, and we'll fold that demand analysis into to, um, the scenario planning as we move ahead. We're also beginning to work um, with our infrastructure team to understand infrastructure master plan and how it folds into our work. And also, as, uh, as you know, we're doing a lot of work on West Campus. Um, with SciTech um, and that the work that they're doing will fold into this as well as the as the months go forward. Uh, one last note, um, we will be coming back to you um, in May with uh, a board update and ahead of that we will be engaging this committee in uh, scenario planning. Um, and then we believe that we'll continue to do some planning uh, um, over the summer, uh, at least for educational session for this committee in order to um, come back to you in August with a formal plan and a final plan for approval. <laughs> 